morning everyone you may have recently just seen my collection and blah de blah de blah video of this my new Lotus Elise club racer yes I have basically just collected it and yes it is where I filmed the first video but today I am doing a video of my first road trip with my Lotus which believe it or not I literally picked this car up five minutes ago and I'm already taking on the first road trip basically we're in Lyon now and I need to drive down to Monaco which is about a five hour drive down. I'm going to hop into this car and I'm going to take it straight on a five hour road trip. That does mean that I do have, look, I've got one bag in the boot there which is tiny but then the whole passenger side is filled up. I'm going to set some cameras up and I'm going to give you the report of what it's like to do A, a road trip in a car you've just bought, B, a road trip in a Lotus Elise which is probably not the best road trip car in the world. <laughs> Let's get in and get started. Okay, here we go then. Ho ho. Watch out. Whoa, Catch join me on the road then, in the Lotus, and my back is not yet hurting. So when I told Sam, seen through glass, I was going to be doing this trip down in the Lotus, I said, first thing you need to do is buy a cushion. So that filled me with confidence. But anyways, we have just hit the road. My sat nav says four and a half hours left to my destination, which is home towards Monaco. So far, so good. I mean, the Lotus, okay, it's not the quietest thing in here, but it's not that noisy. I mean, I think it's actually quieter in here than it was in the 4C. Obviously, I spent quite a bit of time with Sam in the 4C um, on our trip across Europe. And this is definitely quiet, I don't need to scream quite as much as I did in that. Initial impressions also, the steering isn't as bad as I thought because it's not power assisted. I thought that might just be a pain, it might just be really heavy and stuff, but once you get moving it's really light and it's really communicative and stuff which is lovely. Visibility, not the best, I'm not going to lie to you. And already when I come past these trucks, because this car weighs about as much as a small pebble, I can already feel it starting to sort of wiggle about when the wind hits the car. This is also quite a windy area of France. So yes, those are the first initial impressions. Seat is holds me in nicely, not that uncomfortable, which is nice. I mean, most of all, I'm just looking forward to just cruising in this car. It is quite warm in here. I am going to need to figure out, I don't know, is this AC? Fan speed down here? Is that working? Are you, oh yeah, there's air coming out of there. I'm on full heat. That's not what we want. Okay, the AC is not very good. There's a first impression for you. I don't know what the hell these things are. I also have no idea what the speed limit is here. We're probably gonna get like 19 speeding tickets on this trip. I miss you, cruise control, already! <laughs> you can actually hear what I'm saying. I don't know which toll thing I go in. And am I gonna be able to reach? Because I'm so bloody low down. Ah, how does this work? Oh my God, I can't reach. Okay, we've discovered a new issue with this car, people. Doesn't really do much. And if I have it on full, 
which I have had, I've had it on the coldest, it's December, and because of the matte black and being basically in a little sauna here, I've had it on the coldest second on full blast, setting, sorry, on full blast, and I'm still kind of warm in here, so I'm gonna have to somehow try and squeeze this jumper off in this tiny little cabin. But, apart from that, it is magnificent. I mean, like, the steering, even just changing lanes is really, really good fun. The vision out isn't as bad as I initially thought. Like, the vision backwards is okay. Blind spot is decently big, but not as bad as I first feared. Um, but the vision out of the front is just gorgeous. You are really low. So I did notice briefly when I was driving out of the city to see the the traffic lights and stuff is pretty hard because you're so low. Um, other things you do here, I don't know if you just heard that, a couple of little stones and everything come back, which makes me think of like the LT and the P1 because that's what you feel in there. So yeah, that's good. Seats, I am starting to feel like they are a bit hard. Um, they're not too bad though. Like my bum is decently comfortable and my back, there's not much pad padding. I'm not gonna lie to you, it is quite hard. But it's not as bad as you may think. Here, as you can see, it's quite comfortable to put my arm up here, but then also I can rest my arm down here against like what I assume is like the chassis of the cards where you step over to get in, which is kind of funky because you're really like probably in the car. Um, so yeah, so far it's just really, really, really exciting. I've been experimenting with Bluetooth and all of that. Sound system is pretty decent. Uh, I can put my phone through it and stuff. I've got voice control, voice command, which only this one has apparently. It was fitted aftermarket. So that's kind of funky. And then speed-wise, plenty of power, plenty of speed for this sort of driving. So yeah, overall, I am so, so happy with this. It has one thing which I have noticed, which is really nice. It's got these two, above the lights, the car sort of comes up like on the 911. Someone's sleeping there, which is quite cool, but then you can sort of aim using those, which is kind of funky. I do wish I had cruise control though. I am missing cruise control. Situation. Effectively, I am now two hours away. However, the fuel gauge, it's not a gauge, it's like an electric little thingy that gives me, so you know, like I get like six bars, let's say. I've got one and a half left. A, I don't know how much that means, because I can't find somewhere where it'll actually give me like a remaining estimate of the distance that I can go. But that's kind of crap. I have no idea how much further I can go. B, I just missed the last service station and I have no idea how far the next one is. So hopefully I'm not gonna run out of fuel. I've now managed to connect my phone to the Bluetooth, which is good. There's a plus side. And still, I'm pretty comfortable. I don't know why people say these things are horrible for like long trips and stuff, because I feel just fine. But I'm gonna try and pull over at the next petrol station to fill this up and then maybe get the manual out. Well, I'll do that when I get home to see like how I can figure out how to get like a remaining distance sort of gauge. But yeah, so far so good, I'd say. I'm loving this car. The sound system isn't the best in the world, but you wouldn't expect it. I think I'll catch up with you at the petrol station. Or if I don't make it, I'll catch up with you on the side of the road. Just after I finished recording that last clip, we're now approaching a payage. I have no idea which one I need to go into. There's so many choices. Right, I'm gonna switch my GoPro on too, so you can get a somewhat front-facing view. Okay, that's not recording. How does this work? I've got my ticket. Probably not going to be able to reach this. Take it. Uh, okay. Uh, take it. 24 euros. 24 euros. We made it, people. nice to get a break actually. Okay, I'm taking the camera by hand. Ugh, it's a mission to get out of this car. They have what I need, they do have what I need. But it's soaking wet here. Okay, how does this work? Oh, 
do. There we go, figured it out. Now then, how much will this take? Camera angle slightly adjusted, ready to go. It says an hour and 35 minutes. <laughs> So guess what guys, we're here. We've made it. So I'm gonna get out the car, I'm pretty tired now. Um, I'm going to, ooh, uh, I've left the lights on. That's why it keeps beeping. Uh, I'm going to get all my bags out and then I'm gonna give you a conclusion of what I thought of this trip. Wow, I'm using my iPhone to um, shine light on me, but as you can tell, and as I just told you, we are here. So I don't know how much you can see. Let me spin the screen around. You can't see that much. Let me try and put my light, nope. Still not that much. But anyways, we, we, why we? I have arrived now here at home. Sorry, it's really blurry. Here's the situation with the bags. Everything's all still good. I got my GoPro there. And yeah, I mean, overall, I'm just so happy. You know what I really want to check out? I really want to see how the bag that was in the um, engine bay is doing. So if I pop the hood, I'm not sure how much you will be able to see this. There is a bag in there. Anyways, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna unpack the car and go and sleep because that was a long drive and I'm feeling pretty exhausted. Uh, have a quick bite to eat as it's only about six o'clock or something and then I'm gonna go straight to bed because I didn't sleep much last night uh, due to excitement of picking this car up and then I did this long drive. So yeah, that's pretty much it. But this car, I am so happy with it. I hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoyed the drive. I'll be doing an in-depth tour and plenty of other videos of this car in the next couple of days. And yeah, thank you as always. Please remember to subscribe if you wanna see plenty more adventures like this and I'll be back with another video soon. Thank you so much. Bye! Ta-da! This is the car, people! This is the little beast that is my Lotus Elise.
club racer. So you'll be seeing loads more, I'll give you more, like I'll do an in-depth tour and everything, but just to show you briefly around the car, it's a matte black Lotus Elise club racer, which is really rare. I'm told only one of three in the country. 